Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm giving you guys some tips on how to get more jobs in photography. Let's go. So yes, I know right now we're in lockdown and right now you can't really go anywhere and look for jobs and it's definitely, don't go do that right now. But once this is all over, you're gonna wanna know these things, especially if you're new to photography. If you've lost your job, like I did, because of everything that's going on, and you're, you're a photographer or filmmaker, and you want some tips on how to get jobs because you now you definitely are gonna need money, like me, you definitely want to know these tricks. Now these tips won't, tips and tricks. I said tricks and then I said tips, but they're tips and tricks. But these things won't benefit you a job, but they can guarantee you to get you closer to a job because these are my experiences. They aren't just like a list of random things that I put together just for a video. These are things that I've learned from my mistakes and I want to share them with you. So number one, build connections. It's really important to build connections if you're new. Even if you're not new, it's always important to find more people that share the same interests as you. Models, photographers, filmmakers, small businesses. If you know people that do any of these things or certain things in your field or even a little bit out of your field, like a small business, they could benefit you a lot. It's really important to know where to look for people and if you can't find any, their social media, everything's really open now. So it's really easy to build connections. A person to person conversation is way better than a text by text conversation. Easy way to build connections is by going to photo shoot meetups. I've been to one so far and I vlogged it and I had the vlog ready, but I accidentally deleted the footage and the whole vlog, so, but anyway, I went to that meetup back in November and he is a photographer. He built up a whole meetup for a bunch of photographers. Anyone could come, it was free. And I met a bunch of people, models and photographers who I all talk to now. And they all live in Chicago and it's really easy now to go meet with them and hang out and take photos. And that's really important to know how to do is talk to people. And so talking to people who share the same interests as you, it's gonna make it a lot easier, especially when you wanna find a job. Tip number two, this one is a little bit confusing because you're probably wondering this video is for making money and this tip is completely the opposite and that's offering free work. Of course, time is money and all that things and you know, whatever, but it's always important if you're starting off working that you should make at least some sacrifices in certain occasions, give out free work and you get some jobs later on. For example, right here, I did a photo shoot with her. Three months later, I had a job. I ended up winning $100 for one hour and it was all because I dedicated some time and gave her a free photo shoot, did my best, and she liked the photos. So it seems kind of bad to give out free time, but if you're new to making money as a photographer, or photographer in general, photography actually, not photographer, you want to be able to dedicate some time to free work so you can end up getting jobs later on. Tip number three is carry around resumes or business cards. I usually carry around a resume. I don't have business cards on me, but they're very easy to make and so are resumes. These are really good just in case you go and you look for jobs and they tell you, oh, I can't hire you today or the manager's not here or something, you know, an excuse to give one. You can always be, here's my resume, here's my business card. And then if they're interested, they'll give you a call, Instagram, whatever, whatever you want to put on it. But there are, it's always important to carry them around because if you don't, they say later on they do decide and they can't contact you, they'll go find somebody else. Tip number four, I believe we're on four, I think we're on four, is, I forgot what tip number four is. Tip number four, know how much to charge. Like I said before, I've done a bunch of jobs. I didn't say that actually, but I have done jobs for many people. And when I started out, I charged so cheap that it was like just a mess. In some places I would charge under $50 and some I would charge $100. And that just mixes everything up and it makes your sort of pricing inconsistent and then when you're looking for a more stable job or stuff like that, it's gonna be very hard. 
if you charge too little you won't have enough to pay for your gear pay for rent if you're renting or pay for certain things that you want to if you pay too much nobody's gonna want to hire you so you have to find a certain limit you don't want to charge too much especially if you don't have a lot of gear but you don't want to, want to charge too little where you don't have enough to even pay for food oh my fucking so now we're on tip five and that is carry around some of your work now depending on what type of job you're trying to get depends on what kind of photos you have to have so I have examples or proof of work that you've done for that type of business. Like if you're taking photos of a car, you wouldn't take portraits or photos of food because they have nothing to do with cars. They want to see photos of cars. They want to see your work on certain things that you've got. I've taken some photos of cars, but I definitely want to improve on that. So I wouldn't go looking for jobs that, about cars right now. But I have taken portraits and that's mainly where my job sort of field has gone so photography while it's all one big business it definitely divides into sections portraits landscapes cars food they're all different areas in one big thing so you have to know what exactly you are trying to get a job in i think we're at number six i didn't count how many tips i had but we're at number six and that is on this one uh, tip only applies if you're new to looking for jobs and that is take any form of payment you can get if you have an extra job and you don't need to pay for rent with your photography or you don't need to pay something with your photography, you're just looking to make some extra money. It's better to get paid than not get paid at all. I have taken one job where I did get paid, where I didn't get paid with money, I got paid with their product, which was the Pink Miracle. Now, if you really need money, explain to them that you need money. But if if you don't really need the money for from your photography job, it's better to get something for free, you know, better than nothing. Tip number seven. I think I have one more, but I can't remember it. I didn't write it down. It's in the back of my head, so I hope I remember it. I've tried looking for jobs online, and while it is easy just to text companies from your phones, DM them, email, all that, it's better to show up to the business. It shows that you care about your work, and it shows that you're not lazy. You're willing to go out there and look for things even if you get rejected. And also, you're as much part of the business as the gear you have and everything you carry around. So it's important to show up to businesses and I forgot the words, but you get the idea. I can't remember what the last tip was. Tip number eight, okay, I remembered it. I remembered it, guys, I remembered it. Be proud of me. Make contracts, make contracts for any job that you do. This is very important because I struggled a lot with it and I didn't do it for my first like three jobs and then it became a headache. Make contracts that both parties sign. Make sure you sign it and the person that's hiring signs it. When I started out my first job, $30. That was one of the tips. Don't charge too little. I charged too little. $30 for a college graduation. I figured I only have one lens. I only have one camera and I did the job. And it was with my, it was with a family member. He asked me to take photos during the graduation, so I did that. And I was there for like an hour and a half. I figured thirty dollars an hour and a half, that's good, whatever. I didn't do a contract, which is what this tip is about. So because I didn't do that contract, he ended up saying, you know, what, I'll give you the money after the party. And in my head, I went, what the fuck? What party are you talking about? What do you mean? So yeah, make sure you do a contract because that states specifically everything they need and if and specifically what you're getting for the job and then if something goes wrong like that in that case i just said you know what i talked to him and i was like you know what? okay i'll do it but next time let me know exactly everything you need and then i'll make a contract it's always important to know what everybody needs so it's important to write it down in a contract it makes it more better for you easier for them easier for everybody that is it for this video make sure to like and subscribe i only had eight tips but if i think of more i probably will i'll do a part two later on thank you guys so much for all the support especially in that one video is the seven indoor photo ideas that one's been doing really good as well as what's in my camera bag as one dislike but anyway Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new. See you guys in the next video. I don't really ha I'm not really good at intros or outros, as you guys may know. Um bye. Bye.